While some parts of South Asia are reeling from the heavy rains, others are sweltering under record-breaking heat. Residents in India's Rajasthan are facing intense heat wave conditions, with some parts of the state recording highs of 50 degrees Celsius. At least a dozen people in the state have reportedly died of suspected heat stroke in recent days. Doctors in Pakistan are also treating victims for heat stroke at hospitals across the country. The southern province of Sindh has seen temperatures soar as high as 52 degrees, the summer's hottest reading so far. Now, the heat is expected to worsen in the coming days for many parts of the country, including its largest city, Karachi. The searing heat can be, well, partly blamed on the El Nino climate phenomenon that brings hotter and drier weather. And things are about to shift, though, because meteorologists say La Nina is forecast to take over for the second half of the year. Elizabeth Neo has more on how these climate patterns change the weather and what to expect. The Pacific Ocean, it is Earth's largest body of water. That is why this region can be an engine for weather around the globe. El Nino and La Nina are forces of nature unlike any other. They are natural climate patterns in the Pacific Ocean, which come around every two to seven years. And they are capable of unleashing devastating weather events across the globe. Different parts of the world experience their effects in different ways. El Nino tends to raise global temperatures, as we saw in 2023, while La Nina events tend to be slightly cooler. Now, to understand how it works, let's first look at normal conditions in the Pacific Ocean. Like a conveyor belt, trade winds blow warm water across the Pacific from east to west. So warm water pools in the west of the Pacific Ocean. But along the coast of the Americas, cold water from deep down in the ocean replaces the warm surface water that is transported away. So in normal conditions, there is a big temperature difference from east to west in the Pacific Ocean. Now think of El Nino as a disruption of normal. Now here is what changes. Trade winds become much weaker, so warm water drifts back to the east. This means more warming on this side. As a result, warm water piles up centrally in the Pacific Ocean. And when that water evaporates, it creates wetter and warmer air. These conditions send shock waves into weather patterns around the world that alter rainfall, heat waves and drought. Tropical regions like Southeast Asia, Australia and Central Africa typically experience drier conditions. El Nino years tend to set new heat records and scientists say it helped fuel early season heat waves in Asia this year. La Nina is essentially the opposite. When La Nina happens, trade winds get stronger. It pushes warm water further west. And then on this side, cold water rises from the depths of the ocean to replace the water that travels away. So the western part of the ocean is warmer than usual and the eastern part is colder than usual. And like El Nino, La Nina also impacts global weather, tending to create weather patterns that are wetter and that can unleash intense storms. Regions such as Australia and Southeast Asia are likely to see increased rainfall, raising the risk of flooding. La Nina generally reduces hurricane activity in the Central and Eastern Pacific, but this sets the stage for more hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. So El Nino and La Nina can virtually affect us anywhere in the world. If not through the weather, it will at least have socioeconomic impacts.